Hello and welcome to Imperial College. I'm very happy to be your lecturer for the Thermodynamics 1 core course in chemical engineering. My name is George Jackson. I'm a professor of chemical physics in the chemical engineering department. I reside on the sixth floor of the Roderick Hill building. That's in the Center for Process Systems Engineering. Unfortunately, at the moment, we won't be able to meet uh, in person, uh, at least at this stage, and we will be interacting online. My lectures will be online. I will also be setting up a forum on Blackboard where you can ask any questions you have or any queries you have about the course. And myself and other members of the team, the tutorial team, will be there to answer your queries. In terms of my research, I work in the area of molecular thermodynamics and statistical mechanics. If you're interested in finding out more about the research that I do with my group, the Molecular Systems Engineering Group at Imperial College, I recommend that you go uh, to my webpage that's there on the bottom of the screen. OK, so this is intended as a short introduction to the course. It's a recording. We will be um, starting our live lectures in the second week of term in October 2020. So what is thermodynamics, I hear you ask? Uh, the scientific and engineering discipline in thermodynamics developed very rapidly during the Industrial Revolution, at the end of the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century. And really the key was the development of the steam engine, epitomized here by the steam locomotive, where one produces heat by burning coal or another combustible material like wood. Uh, you boil uh, with that, you boil water and then you pass it through a turbine and generates uh, forward motion in the case of this um, of the steam engine or any other type of engine. Um, you will see on my slides that you have a button on here. That button denotes that there's a video associated with the, the particular topic that I'm talking about. And in the lecture slides that you will be able to download from Blackboard, you just have to click on that and it takes you to a link in the video. In this case, let's just watch this video about a steam locomotive. This was due, uh, this was associated with an accident that happened in the Gap of Mont in Paris. Very good. So in this case, you can see that there was quite a lot of power associated with the production of heat, uh, burning your coal in the steam engine and producing uh, forward motion in the locomotive. I hope that I'll be able to show you in this course that not all of thermodynamics involve this, involves this kind of disaster. OK, although there are aspects to that, the entropic side of things with the second law of thermodynamics that we will talk about in more detail. In terms of thermodynamics itself, uh, itself uh, what is it, I hear you ask? So thermodynamics is a conjunction of two words, thermo or thermi from, from the Greek, that means heat. In fact, the old Greek word for thermodynamics comes from the word for fever, and dynamics from dynamis, which relates to force and power. So historically, the term was coined in the 19th century as the discipline that understands the link between heat and mechanical work as the one that I showed you in the steam engine. Today, it's a much more general discipline and it's really based on the mathematical description of the physical properties of energy and entropy, how they relate to each other and how they relate to the work um, that can be obtained uh, from a given energetic source. In terms of a definition, I'm giving you a standard definition here from a di dictionary. I'll just read it out to you. The so thermodynamics is the branch of physical science that deals with the relations between heat and other forms of energy. And these other forms involve mechanical energy, which you call work or electrical energy or electrical heat and chemical energy that's associated with chemical reactions. And then by extension, the re relationships between these different forms of energy. So how can I go from heat to mechanical energy? And how does is that stored in a sense in a system uh, in terms of internal energy. So they're associated with thermodynamics. You will know that they're laws of thermodynamics. You would have learned that before you came to university. The first law 
really reaffirms a principle of conservation of energy, okay, and the equivalence between heat and work. And we'll start uh, looking at that law first. The second law of thermodynamics, um, there are various ways of stating it. One way is that heat cannot pass from a cooler body to a hotter body in a spontaneous fashion. Okay, you have to do something for, for the, the opposite to, to happen. Equivalently, the second law, um, and that's a more fundamental form of the second law, is that if you have a closed system uh, and you're not interacting with that system, the en entropy of a spontaneous process can only increase. The third law we won't be looking at, and it involves uh, what the entropy is for a system at zero uh, Kelvin. Okay, so as I've said, the laws of thermodynamics are really the, the cornerstone of the, of the discipline. Okay, these are fundamental laws and postulates, so you can't prove them. You can just show that uh, for practical instances, they actually hold. As I've already said, the energy and its conservation uh, involves the first law of thermodynamics. And in this particular course, we will be looking at two forms of changing the energy, two ways of changing the energy of a system. One way is uh, by introducing heat or extracting heat from the system. And the other way is by doing work on the system or, or the system doing work uh, on the surroundings. The second law of thermodynamics, really that involves entropy and the direction of spontaneous change in a particular process. And we're going to be using that in quite a lot of detail throughout the course. And then I'm going to introduce uh, the zeroth law of thermodynamic, uh, thermodynamics that involves thermal equilibrium. And so that really uh, defines temperature and how the temperature of a system uh, denotes how heat uh, is transferred from one system to the other. And I will examine each one of these laws in detail in the course. Interestingly, the, the second law of thermodynamics was developed in 1824 by Sadi Carnot. Um, so it's really the first one that was um, brought into being. The first law came into being in the 1840s uh, with uh, uh, Mayer and Joule, and then it was um, uh, formulated as a conservation law by Helmholtz. And the thermal equilibrium, which is really the most basic of the laws, only came into being in the 1930s uh, um, with the books written by Fowler and by Guggenheim. Okay, so what role does thermodynamics play in chemical engineering? So I'm giving you an example here of a gas liquefaction process in a plant. So this is a typical kind of process. So here what you're doing on the left hand side is you're using heat derived from by heating by burning uh, gas, for example, in a power plant, you're passing, uh, so you're heating, for example, steam, passing it through a power plant, using that to run a turbine to produce mechanical power. Um, in order to cool the steam again and produce a cyclical process, you need to use cooling water. So the questions that you will have here is how much heat do I have to uh, produce from burning of my fossil fuel? to produce the mechanical power that I need in this particular process, and how much cooling water, for example, do I need to cool down the steam and recycle it in, on the left-hand side of the process. On the right-hand side, we're using mechanical power in a compressor to liquefy a gas, okay? So to compress the gas uh, and produce a liquid. And for example, in this particular case, you will be using the liquid and, and selling it in the particular process. So all of these uh, aspects, all of these process units involve thermodynamics and the interaction between heat and work and how it changes the state of a particular material, in this case, going from a gas to the liquid. And we're going to be looking at examples of this throughout the course. In terms of the course content, there are five chapters associated with the course. In the first chapter, we will define the basic definitions uh, that are used in the discipline of thermodynamics, um, heat, work, power, etc., uh, temperature, pressure, volume. And then we will be looking at the volumetric properties of real fluids, um, how they're interrelated to each other and how they relate to the phase equilibria uh, in a fluid. So how do you go from a liquid to a gas? Um, we won't be concentrating so much uh, with solids in this part of the course. 
In the second chapter, we will be looking at the first law of thermodynamics. So it's really the interrelationship between work and heat and energy in the system. OK, and what's the difference uh, between heat, energy and work? OK, and we will end with the application of the first law of thermodynamics to some simple process units. For example, uh, valves, compressors, turbines and heat exchangers. The third chapter is devoted to entropy and I will introduce the concept of reversibility and irreversibility uh, relating to the second law of thermodynamics. OK, so we will formulate the second law and we will look at how the second law of thermodynamics and entropy changes apply to simple process units. Again, valves, compressors, turbines and heat exchangers. In the fourth chapter, we will look at applications um, for devices for the interconversion of heat and work in cyclical processes. For example, uh, power generation. So there what you're using is heat derived from some source uh, to run a turbine and produce work okay the other type of process that we will be looking at is refrigeration cycles in that case you're doing work on a system to actually cool it down as you would do in a simple refrigerator and then another process that's quite important is a liquefaction of gases okay um, as in the first example that i gave you by the time we get to the fifth chapter you will see that there's a very formal and a powerful mathematical treatment uh, underlying the foundations of thermodynamics. And I will show you how powerful that is by looking at um, the, pr the properties of exact differentials. So we will cast the first and the second laws as exact differentials and then define uh, a very important function, which is called the Gibbs energy, and come back to phase equilibria, which is really in the first chapter, and show you how you can predict and describe phase equilibria in terms of a thermodynamic uh, quantity, which is the Gibbs free energy. OK, on Blackboard, you will find a lot of information. OK, one thing that you will find is a tentative schedule uh, for this course. And you will see here, it's difficult to see maybe on these slides, but you can find it on Blackboard. The first chapter will be the first four lectures of the course. The second chapter, which is, as I've told you, the first law of thermodynamics, will be the next five to 11 lectures associated with the course. And then we will come to the third chapter on entropy and come to the Christmas break. OK, after the Christmas break, we will have a problem class where we summarize uh, everything that we've learned in the third chapter and then move on in the second term to the thermodynamic analysis of processes, as I've already mentioned to you power generation, refrigeration, and the liquefaction of gases. We will come to chapter five, our last chapter, and that's the mathematics of thermodynamics, defining the Gibbs energy and phase equilibria at the end of the course. We also, you will see that we have two deliverables here. These are homework assignments. The precise date for those haven't been set yet. And uh, that is where you can get 10% of the available marks associated with the course by solving two problems and handing them in. We'll see sometime in May, I think this is the 13th of May that we have here in schedule at the moment, we will have two revision classes before our exams. So to summarize the course structure, we have 25 lectures, two revision classes, and you will also have weekly small group tutorials where you work through homework problems and problem sheets that I will be setting for you. I will also then be posting the solutions to the uh, tutorial problems on Blackboard. In terms of assessment, you have a summer examination. That's the main exam uh, at the end uh, in, in May or June next year. And that corresponds to 80% of the course. You also have a spring test that corresponds to 10% of the course. Uh, as its name suggests, that takes place sometime in the spring. And you have two homework deliverable prob problems that you have to complete and upload. You also have associated with the course a Christmas test and mastery tests and mastery sheets that you have to answer. In terms of the precise syllabus and everything else, you can go to Blackboard. So let me talk a little bit about the resources that we have. So Blackboard, uh, you sign into Blackboard with your college email 
And there you can download the course syllabus, the tentative schedule, lecture slides, notes, tutorial problem sheets and solutions, and past exam papers with solutions. OK, I'm giving you an example of what this looks like here. And this is where, for example, you can find the slides associated with the four, five chapters that I have in this particular course. OK, and you can go to that. I've also mentioned the forum at the very start of my talk, and I please ask you to subscribe to the forum, um, and that will give you notifications when things are uploaded on the forum. And as I've said, that's a way of communicating with me in terms of questions and answers. So you post your questions on here. You can do so anonymously if you prefer. And myself and other tutors in the course will answer these questions for everyone to see. Um, so it's a very useful way of communicating. And I also put information about key dates and uh, key deadlines in the forum just to remind you where everything is. In terms of other resources, our main course textbook is this book here, Introductory Chemical Engineering Thermodynamics. It's the second edition here. It's a book by Elliot and Lyra, and you can get it uh, on Pearson's. OK, it's a second edition was uh, edited in 2012. Um, I've made an agreement with Pearson's to produce an economy version of the book. This is quite a large textbook. And for the Therm Thermodynamics 1 course, we only need the first nine chapters of the course. And uh, so I've collected those uh, nine chapters in this compiled economy version of the book. It's, uh, it's basically only for students at Imperial College, and it's much cheaper. It's about the third of the price of the original textbook. So I recommend that you have a look at those and purchase that book, which is the key book for our thermodynamics course. You will see throughout the course that you also need thermodynamic tables, OK, uh, which are compilations of thermodynamic data. This green version here, it's the thermodynamics and transport properties of fluids by Rogers and Mayhew, fifth edition, is the one that you will use during examinations because clearly you don't have access to the in internet during the exams. And this one here, the, the darker copy here, is the one that you can buy. And I recommend that you get, get yourselves a copy. They're, they're reasonably cheap. Another key resource is the NIST Chemistry Web Book. Um, that's a website um, produced by the NIST, US NIST Government Department, where you can get properties of all types of fluid systems. And we can use those to analyze the thermodynamic properties and materials, OK? And you will see that we use them throughout the course, both the thermodynamic tables and the NIST uh, web page to obtain data for use within the course. OK, so that's the end of this short introduction. I'm sorry that we have to do this in this way online, um, but I look forward to seeing you live online for our lecture at, from 10 to 11 on the 13th of October. OK, as I've mentioned, this is the, the uh, second on the second week, week of term. OK, let me end with a video. Uh, I'd like you to think about this video and how it relates to thermodynamics. As I've said, when you see my slides and it has a button, that means that there's a video associated with it. And this I'm has important connotations with this is becoming very obsessive. This morning, I caught him trying to dissect her own raincoat. I know. And this perpetual motion machine she made today is a joke. It just keeps going faster and faster. Oh, that's it. We have to get them back to school. I'm with you, Marge. Lisa, get in here. <laughs> in this house, we obey the laws of thermodynamics. Goodbye and see you in October. <laughs>